Lesson 34, I will subtract mixed numbers. This is a continuation of what we did in lesson 33. So because this is a continuation, we are not going to be using our math journals today. We're going to go right straight to our problem set. So I want you to go ahead and get out your problem set. And I want you to write your name at the top. top and then we're going to take a look at some of these strategies that we're going to use to subtract mixed numbers. Now the first thing you're going to notice on number one is that the directions just say subtract. So what that means is it's not really giving you any kind of direction for how they want you to subtract. It's just giving you the directions to subtract. Also, you're going to notice that this is not subtracting two mixed numbers. You're going to notice that this is a mixed number minus a fraction. So we have four and one third minus two thirds. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, can I take two thirds away from one third? And the, and the answer to that is no. So I want you to take a look at what they've done here. They've decomposed four and one third into three and four thirds. That's a little different, isn't it? We haven't ever seen this before. But if you put this together, you will get four and one third. But you could go ahead and take four thirds minus two thirds, and that would give you two thirds. And you add that to three, and you've got three and two thirds, which is the answer to A. Okay, that's one strategy. All right, now let's take a look at B. We've got five and two fourths minus three fourths. So if we wanted to use a strategy that they've used up here, what they did was they took out a whole number. So I'm going to say this is four. And I'm going to take this whole number and add it to this fraction. So I'm going to say four fourths plus two fourths would be six fourths. Then I'm going to take three fourths away. And that's going to leave four. And then what I get here, which is three fourths. So watch that one more time. Okay, so I've got 8 and 3 fifths. I'm going to take out the whole numbers. I'm going to leave one whole number, so I'm going to make take out 7. So that leaves one whole number and this fraction. I'm going to change the whole number that I left into 5 fifths and add it to 3 fifths. So that gives me 7 and 8 fifths. Now I'm going to subtract 4 fifths from 8 fifths. So I'm left with 7 and four fifths. Eight fifths minus four fifths is four fifths, and then I just put it right here with this seven. Okay, now let's take a look at a different strategy here. So it says subtract the ones first. So this is two mixed numbers. So they've got three minus one, which is two, which we did that in lesson 33. And then they decompose two and one fourth the same way that we were decomposing them in the first part of this lesson set, and then they just subtracted. Okay. So let's see if we can do that. So let's start by subtracting the whole numbers. 4 minus 1 is 3, and that leaves 2 fifths. Okay, so I took out this 1. I already subtracted that, minus 3 fifths. Now I'm going to decompose 3 and 2 fifths, just like I did at the beginning of this problem set. I'm going to take out the whole number, so that leaves 2. And I'm going to take that whole number, which is 5 fifths, and add it to 2 fifths, and that gives me 7 fifths. So now I've got 2 and 7 fifths minus 3 fifths. So I could actually come up here and rewrite this if this makes it easier for you to understand. 2 and 7 fifths minus 3 fifths equals 2 and 4 fifths. Okay, let's try that again. So let's subtract the whole numbers. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So now I've already subtracted this 3. I'm finished with it. Now I've still got two six left with this whole number, and I still have to subtract five sixes. So let's decompose two and two sixes into one whole, and then I take the other whole and change it to six sixes and add it to two six. So six six plus two six is eight sixes. So now I have one and eight sixes minus five sixes. That equals one and three six. If this is making sense to you and you want to try one on your, on your own, go ahead and pause the video and try it by yourself. If you're still a little bit unsure, just stay with me and we'll work through another one together. All right, so let's subtract whole numbers. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So I just took away 2. I'm finished with that. So I'm left with 3 fifths, and I'm still got to subtract 4 fifths. So let's go ahead and decompose this. So that leaves me with 6, 
And then I've got this whole number, which is 5 fifths plus 3 fifths, gives me 8 fifths. So now I have 6 and 8 fifths minus 4 fifths. That leaves 6 and 4 fifths. Okay, now it says we can solve using any strategy. That means that we can use any of the strategies that we used before. Now, like I told you in lesson 33, I have found that most fourth graders find the arrow strategy to be the most efficient. That may not be true for you. You may have picked up on a strategy yesterday that makes perfect sense to you and you can do it quickly and always get the correct answer. If that's true, use whatever strategy you want. I'm going to choose to use the arrow way only because I have found that most fourth graders are able to do that strategy well. Okay, so remember when you use the arrow way, you're starting with a small number and you're counting up. Okay, so we're going to do two and five eighths and we're going to count up to the next whole number which is three. So to get from two and five eighths to three, I'm going to add three eighths. Okay, so remember, I'm trying to get to 7 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to go from 3 to 7. So from whole number to whole number. So that's going to be plus 4. Now I'm going to go from 7 to 7 and 3 eighths, which means I'm going to add 3 eighths. Now all I have to do is add all of these numbers together. So I've got my whole number 4. 3 eighths plus 3 eighths is 6 eighths. Okay, all right, let's try this one. So I'm looking and my fraction here is greater than this fraction, so I can't just subtract. So I'm going to start with the arrow strategy. So I've got 3 and 8 tenths, and I'm going to go to the next whole number, which is 4. So what would I have to add here to get from 3 and 8 tenths to 4? I would have to add 2 tenths. So now I'm going from 4 to what? I'm going from 4 to 6. So to get from 4 to 6, I have to add 2, and then I'm going from 6 to 6 and 4 tenths, so I'm going to add 4 tenths. Now I add all of these together. So I have 2, and then I've got 2 tenths plus 4 tenths, which is 6 tenths. Okay, if you're feeling comfortable, go ahead and pause the video and try these last two by yourself and see how you do. Now again, 8 twelfths is bigger than 3 twelfths, so I can't just subtract. So because I can't just subtract, I'm going to use the arrow strategy. So I've got 3 and 8 twelfths, and I'm going to go to the next whole number. What would the next whole number be? It would be 4. So what would I have to add to get from 3 and 8 twelfths to 4? I would have to add 4 twelfths. So now I'm going from 4 to what? I'm trying to get to 8. So from 4 to 8, you'd have to add 4. And then I'm going from 8 to 8 and 3 twelfths. So I have to add 3 twelfths. So now I add all that together. I have the whole number 4. 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 7 twelfths. Okay, last one. So again, 43 fiftieths is bigger than 2 fiftieths, so I can't just subtract, so I'm going to use the arrow strategy. So I'm starting at 6 and 43 fiftieths, and I'm trying to get to 7. So I've got to think, hmm, what do I have to add to 43 fiftieths to get to 7? Well, I have to add 7 fiftieths, because I'm trying to get to 6 and 50 fiftieths, so I have to add 7 fiftieths. So I'm going from 7 to what's my next whole number? I'm trying to go from 7 to 14, which means I'm going to add 7, and then I go from 14 to 14 and 2 fiftieths, which means I have to add 2 fiftieths. Then I add all this together, that equals 7 and 9 fiftieths. So again, I chose the arrow strategy here. This may not be your favorite strategy. If this is not your favorite strategy, don't feel like you have to use it. However, the, remember, I chose to use this strategy just because this is what most fourth graders can do really well. But remember, we still use, we can use this strategy where we subtracted the whole numbers first, and then we decomposed the mixed number and subtracted the fraction. You could also use this strategy here. 
if you didn't have mixed numbers, okay? Well, that's the same strategy, but right up here where we did the same thing, okay? There are lots of strategies. You can even go back and look at lesson 33 at some of those strategies that we used and see if there's anything there that you like better. Pick the strategy that makes sense to you that you can do quickly and you can get the correct answer. Because remember, if you choose a strategy that you can do fast, but you always get the wrong answer, it's not a good strategy to use.